Yeah? All right. I think you've heard this story before about decarbonization. The first step, we're going to add lots of zero carbon uh, generation to the grid, like solar or this wind farm up in Wyoming. The second step for when the wind doesn't blow or the sun doesn't shine, we're going to add a bunch of storage or load shifting, which could be conventional pumped hydro, it could be home-based batteries, it could be managed charging of electric vehicles, any of those work. And then the third step is we will try to electrify everything that we can. Everything that's currently burns a fossil fuel, we'll try to replace it with a heat pump, whether that's heating homes, heating water, um, even industrial processes. So to sum this story up, you add zero carbon electricity to a heat pump, and we can then preserve our planet for the next generation. So smiling kids in the ice palace on top of the mountain forever and ever. That's what our goal is. So who is on the heat pump train? I am. <laughs> Joe is, or at least his administration is. But what if I told you that in our rush to build our decarbonization infrastructure as fast as we can, we are forgetting a really important piece, just as important as forgetting the uh, river crossings on a rail line. So think about what happens when it gets really, really cold outside. We have to cross a river of cold. So the question is, how do we keep people in Denver warm when it's below zero for four days straight? Not just gets below zero at night. No, it does not. We have no degrees for four days straight. This is a critical problem. In Texas, when policymakers failed to anticipate the impacts of a storm, like winter storm Uri, hundreds of people died. So this, this is critical. We have to consider how exactly we'll keep people warm all the time. So the last time I spoke about decarbonization at Switch, I made the case, I recommended that we should install as many heat pumps and build as many all-electric buildings as possible um, to help decarbonize. I still feel really good about the heat pumps, not as good as about the, uh, about the all-electric buildings. Here's why. So I have an equation or a couple of equations for the nerds in the back, right? Um, but the simplified version is when you have zero energy, sorry, zero carbon electricity, you can make zero carbon heat. Unfortunately, we do not always have zero carbon electricity, and we won't for a very long time. So NREL forecasts that even in a decarbonized grid, we will meet 4% uh, of our electricity needs with natural gas. In fact, there are forecasts that we will need more natural gas generating capacity in that decarbonized future than we currently have. So in practice, this means that on roughly the 10 coldest days of the year, when we need huge amounts of electricity, every electron that we add for a heat pump will be provided by burning natural gas. So that's the first problem. Second problem, heat pumps don't work as well when it's cold out. Even today's top of the line cold climate heat pump as measured by our friends down the road at NREL shows that the capacity and efficiency drops off when it gets really cold. So the end result is that when you look over here, right, uh, this is an all electric home in Northern Colorado, it uses about seven times as much electricity on a really cold day as on a typical day. So what can we do for backup that would be most carbon efficient. First up, option one, uh, you have what's typically done is you install electric resistance elements in the air handler. Um, it turns out that's very carbon inefficient. A gas furnace is much more carbon efficient than that option. So now what if I add a whole bunch of uh, cold climate heat pump capacity? So I get really electric resistance. It turns out that that works until it gets really cold out. And then again, the furnace is still more carbon efficient than that option when, it's really, when it gets really cold. In fact, a heat pump needs to beat heat pump fueled with natural gas fired electricity needs to beat a uh, COP of 2.25 to beat a standard furnace or 2.67 to beat a high efficiency furnace, which is hard to do. Um, however, an option that does work is the ground source heat pump. So if you have the money and the room, you can put in ground source heat pump, the efficiency and capacity does not decline. If you don't have the money, but still feel the need to cut the gas line, uh, consider a pellet stove, right? It's a better option than the electric resistance option that you're being, being sold. So last though, um, you all should really consider a furnace. The choice should not be heat pump or furnace. The right choice is heat pump and furnace. 
So get yourself a heat pump, but don't feel bad about keeping your furnace. Thank <laughs> you.